Hello, I'm Nicholas, and I'm going to be speaking about energy. We have to go over some terminology first. Exothermic. An exothermic reaction transfers heat to the surroundings, thus increasing the surrounding temperature. A good example of this would be a fire. You can feel the energy coming off a fire in the form of heat. Endothermic. An endothermic reaction takes in energy from the surroundings, therefore decreasing the surrounding temperature. A good example of this would be an ice cube. You can feel the energy transfer between your hand and an ice cube as it takes in energy. Therefore, the temperature of your hand would decrease. Endothermic reaction profile. We can see the reactants are lower in energy than the products. Thus, the reaction would need to take in energy in order to react. Exothermic. You can see the reactants are higher in energy than the products. Thus, the reaction will give out energy. Delta H is always positive for endothermic and always negative for exothermic. Activation energy is the minimum energy required for a successful reaction. In other words, atoms have enough energy to overcome the repulsion between the electrons and have a successful collision. Increasing the temperature will increase the number of particles with this activation energy. Therefore, if you increase the temperature by roughly 10 degrees C, the rate usually doubles. Let's look at some practice questions. We need to understand a few things to be able to do these questions. Using average bond energies, you can calculate the energy change of reaction. Therefore, energy change equals bonds broken minus bonds made. Let's look at this first question. They've given us the production of sulfur trioxide. They've showed us the reaction scheme. They've given us the value of a sulfur to oxygen bond, 523 kilojoules. The question is, the total energy needed to break the bonds in the reaction is 2,587 kilojoules. Calculate the energy needed to break an oxygen to oxygen bond. Let's break this down. We know the value of a sulfur to oxygen bond. And we know the total value of how much energy it takes to break all the bonds. That's 2,587 kilojoules. So if we do the total value of the, the total energy of the bonds broken minus the sulfur to oxygen bonds, we'll get the oxygen to oxygen bond. So if we do 2,587 minus 4 times 523, because there are 4 sulfur to oxygen bonds, that'll give us 495 kilojoules, which is the energy of an oxygen to oxygen bond. The next question. Calculate the overall energy change in the reaction. Now this question is a little bit more tricky. So step one, add together the bond energies of the bonds that are broken. Step two, add together the bond energies of the bonds that are made. Step three, we're just going to plug the numbers into the equation. So energy change equals bonds broken minus bonds made. So we know the bonds broken, that's 2,587 kilojoules. We've got to calculate the bonds made. So we know the value of a sulfur to oxygen bond, and we see the six of them. So six times 523 is 3,138. That is the energy of the bonds made. If we plug those numbers into the formula, we see the energy change equals 2,587, which is the bonds broken, minus 3,138, which is the bonds made. This gives us minus 551. Let's look at this last question. Calculate the energy change of the reaction profile. We can see in the question above that the energy change is negative. Therefore, the reaction is exothermic. I've shown a few slides ago the reaction profile of an exothermic reaction. Reactants are higher in energy than the products. Therefore, it gives out heat. Let's look at another question. A student investigates the temperature rise during a neutralization reaction, They've shown as the setter. The student puts 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide solution and five drops of universal indicator into a polystyrene cup and recorded the temperature of the alkaline. After 10 seconds, the student added 25 centimeters cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid to the alkaline and recorded the temperature every five seconds. For another 30 seconds. Graph A shows the results obtained. Use the graph to calculate the maximum temperature rise during the reaction. Really this is asking us for the change in temperature. 
So we see the graph peaks at 28 degrees C and it starts at 21.5 degrees C. If we take 28 away from 21.5, we'll get 6.5 degrees C. The next question. The energy given out can be calculated using the following formula. They've given us the formula. Energy given out equals the total volume of the reaction mixture times 4.2 times the rise in temperature. Calculate the energy given out of the reaction. So the, we know the total volume of the reaction. It's been very nice to us and put in bold total. So that's 25 centimeters cubed plus 25 centimeters cubed, which will give us 50 centimeters cubed. Times a constant, 4.2, times 6.5, which is the rise in temperature we calculated from part I. We times all that together, we work out the energy given out is 1,365 kilojoules. Let's go to the next question. The temperature of the contents in the cup was recorded after two hours. Give the temperature, give the final temperature reading you would expect. Give the reason for your answer. If we look at the photo of the apparatus they've set up, apart from the polystyrene cup, we don't see a, a very good way of insulating the heat from escaping. And after the reaction has taken place, we'd, we'd assume there'd be nothing left to react after two hours. So we'd assume it goes back to room temperature. So the final temperature would be 21.5 degrees C. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this helped.